Okay, looks like it's time for another tutorial. This one is going to be on the basics of adding textures to objects. This, this is a very basic tutorial. If you're an advanced LightWave user, you might want to uh, skip it. But if you're new to this, uh, someone was asking me about adding textures, so this is how it's done. And uh, first, um, I'm going to go into polygon mode. I'm going to select this box here, hit the right bracket to select everything that is connected to that. And then I'm going to hit Q for surface. You can see a button down here for it. And I'm going to give this, I'm going to call this box. And when you uh, select, you're just giving it the surface name and the, the base color and just some base um, settings here. Uh, you're not doing too much to it. I'll select the, the sphere, right bracket, Q. I'll call this sphere and I'll make this one uh, kind of a red. All right. So now we have two different objects with uh, two different surfaces. I'm in textured wire mode so I can see the wireframe and the textures at the same time. And uh, let's hit uh, F5 to bring up the actual surface editor. So now that we have the surfaces, we have to you know do something with them. Now I'm just going to show you the very bare bones of this because it can get very complex. But the very very uh, it's very easy in Lightwave to get um, acceptable uh, results in in no time flat. So we have our object here, and I'm in textured mode. And as you can see, there's different channels that make up the surface, color, luminosity, diffuse, all this kind of stuff. And it gets to be complex if you go into it. Uh, but um, I'm going to show you right now just how to do, um, how to add an image map to the color channel and some other channels and how to ma manipulate that. So <clears throat> I'm going to hit the uh, T for texture key. And as you can see, uh, texture editor box comes up. The layer type, this is like a layer uh, editor in Photoshop. You have layers and they stack on top of each other and you can blend them together using different modes and different opacities and in the end you get a final texture. All right, so I'm gonna set this to image map. Your three choices, image map, procedural, and gradient. Procedural is like a mathematical formula and uh, the good thing about this is that you can zoom into this as close as you want, it will never pixelate. They take longer to render and uh, they're only these certain types, but you'll use these later on. For example, ripples you would use to create like a, a pawn kind of effect. We're gonna go to image map, and I already have some images loaded. I'm gonna add this image, and as you can see, it already updated. There's the image right there, sprayed onto here. And when you add an image, there's a projection, and it's just like, imagine a real movie projector projecting an image uh, onto this object instead of a movie screen. So you'll see that the image on the front side where it's projecting on the z-axis here, it's, um, it looks pretty nice, but on the other axes, the X and Y, it uh, is, is kind of streaking across. Just like if you had a movie projector and it was spraying on, on the front of an object, the size of it would get kind of streaked. So, um, <clears throat> so that's um, a problem with, with this type of projection mapping. This is a projection mapping. Planar is good for flags and billboards and things like that. My favorite projection mapping is cubic, which, as you can see, are, uh, automatically it looks uh, a million percent better. And it creates four projectors on each side of the object, uh, front, back, top, down, left, right, and, uh, well, that's six, actually. but, but um, And then each one has its own independent axis. So I can go ahead, if I want this front axis to cover the entire front of this object, I can start scaling this. And I'll scale the Y. And that can position it so that it is kind of more centered. I'll scale up. I can even rotate it if I want. Rotate up and down. Remember, it's just like you're rotating the projectors. Once this is, is finished and fixed on, you know, once you've used this and gotten what you want, later on you can animate these things if you wanted. You can use, you know, click on the envelope and you can animate the uh, thing, the texture rotating. Oh, in order, once you click on that, these uh, envelopes become active. Uh, if you want to get rid of those envelopes, hold down Shift and click click on them again. That trick is, is useful for anything there. So, and um, let me show you the other uh, mapping types. Spherical makes it um, like a ball. Uh, imagine mapping it onto a, a globe or something, and um, you, you'll imagine what's going on. Obviously, it's not a very good uh, item for, for this type of object. And cylindrical, is good for columns and tubes and ropes and things like that. But I, I always uh, keep a cubic 
as much as I can because it gives you kind of an even look to things. Uh, front mapping would be used if you had a camera in the, in the light wave scene and you wanted to match uh, background footage. UV mapping is um, the most accurate mapping and it's also the most complex and what it is is imagine you take all the polygons of this object this three-dimensional object and you flatten them out uh, in 2D space and then um, after you've done that you kind of pin the uh, image to all those polygons and you have to create this map by hand it's it's very uh, time-consuming and tedious but it will give you the best results because the image goes exactly where you want it and uh, imagine the image is made of rubber and you're actually sticking it on here with a stick pin that's what UV mapping is I don't have time to show you how to do that in this tutorial uh, so that is the basics of adding that um, let me show you how to, to manipulate the layers let's add another image of map layer and let's go for okay this image here and I'm gonna set this one to cubic if we bring up F5 we'll be able to see a, a preview of our uh, surface and I'm gonna set this one to 50% opacity I'm gonna set this one to 50% opacity and as you can see the two images are kinda of melding together um, let me move this back up to 100 and instead of 50% set to normal I'll set this to subtractive or additive and as you can see it's it's um, just like it, these are exactly operate just like in Photoshop so additive is gonna take the bright pixels and add that brightness to the image and you can get different effects using different uh, these different uh, filters there usually what you end up doing is kind of messing around with it just to get a, a different look and uh, that's very easy to do uh, also let me show you very quickly how to use the other uh, color channels I'm gonna copy all the layers in this list click on use texture to make sure it's used I'm gonna add those layers to my specular channel and my bump map channel. And as you can see, it's already started to take on more, more dimension. It looks more 3D because you have some, some specular highlights and you have some bumpiness. And um, what these values here mean is that whatever is here is going to be the value of the lowest pixel. So for example, the lowest pixel in this um, image, the lowest rated pixel in this image uh, is going to have a value of 0% specularity and the the, um, the highest uh, rated pixel in, in this image is going to have um, a value of whatever 100% or whatever we give it here. The same thing for bump. So the bump starts off at 100%. I'm gonna go to this one. I'm gonna add texture amplitude of 5 and you'll see automatically it got much more bumpy. So that's the basics of using this. Um, one more thing, diffuse. Diffusion is um, uh, basically the amount of light that the gets bounced back off of the image and so uh, something 100% diffuse would be something like plastic or, or whatever very few things are 100% diffuse you probably want to drop this down and it seems like all it is doing is darkening it but it means you'll it, it mimics the effect of uh, objects in real life how some objects uh, like black cloth will absorb a lot of light and other objects will bounce a lot, of, a lot of light off. So if you turn the diffuse down and then use a lot of lights in your scene, you'll be able to actually get much more detail out of your object because it will behaving, be behaving like, more like its real world counterpart. That's the basics of texturing. I'll have more on that later.